Smithy, what's up with it? Hey, Cotton. I, uh, what's up with this axe? Oh, that? That's a hammer! Um, I know you're the Smithy, and I'm not saying that you don't know what you're doing, but I'm pretty sure this is an axe. Nope, that's a hammer. But it has a flat head and a sharp edge. Right, yeah, well, maybe I used the whetstone a little too much with it, but it's still a hammer on the inside. Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, welcome one and all to a bit of a talk on a subject I've been thinking about for years. Sharp weapons and blunt weapons. There are only two blunt weapons in the game, and this honestly makes them individually just a little bit stronger than they would be otherwise. However, not significantly. The stun is a bonus, but not the main reason to use the weapon by any means. It is useful and appreciated, but not overpowered in the slightest. Now consider that not every weapon model is made the same. Sure, 99% of hammers look like hammers. 99% of dual blades look like dual blades, but that tiny, tiny, tiny little small little percentage that don't, those are what have my attention today. The sharp looking hammers, the blunt looking dual blades, and the equivalents for every other weapon out there. Why do they still do the same damage type as normal? Why don't they swap? So the axe hammer does sharp and the club dual blades do blunt. Well, the short answer is to avoid confusion and a whole lot of extra mechanics, which brings up the question, would it be worth it for the quality of the game as a whole and the enjoyment of the community to put in said mechanics and balancing and guide people through this confusion? Well, let's start off by talking about how this could be implemented, the ways that we could see it from the more simple to the more complex. First off, I do think that this happening in the first place would see a big surge in these alternative weapon types. Like, I'm sure at least a third of the weapons for each weapon category would be made to be blunt sharp or sharp blunt, just to really allow the mechanic room to breathe and grow. And because it would allow far more design freedom too. Imagine something like a greatsword that is just a log, like a monster knocked down a tree so the great sword player just picked up the tree and started swinging that shit. This is the type of weapon that I am picturing right now. First off, you may be thinking, wait a moment, surely everyone would just always use the blunt versions of everything because they just gain stun, right? Well, to avoid that, you would make the alternate versions of the weapons do a percentage less damage, however much that they decide is balanced. For example, let's say that the best blunt greatsword does 5% less damage than the best sharp greatsword, and the best sharp hammer does 5% less damage than the blunt hammer. As for why it would be sharp that has less for hammer and hunting horn, it's just to keep the identity of the weapon, really. They should still be pushed towards blunt weapons because that's what they are at heart. But that shouldn't stop them from having some less powerful options that are sharp that they can use to cut tails, or to use on bosses with terrible blunt damage hit zones. The whole idea of this is not to replace what is already in place completely, not to definitively make blunt greatswords the best or anything like that, but to give players more options for how they choose to hunt, especially more within the comfort of their own moveset. If you're struggling with a particularly hard fight because your weapon does its best damage to the head, maybe switch from blunt to sharp, and the weakest spot could be somewhere totally different, completely changing how the fight feels and flows. You're dealing with different attacks from different angles, but while still letting you have the moveset that you love. On top of that, if this were to become a major part of the games with a large number of the weapons being type swapped like this, I could totally see them creating a slightly different set of animations based on if you're using the sharp or blunt version of your weapon, not changing the moveset in terms of the hitbox of your attacks or the timings or anything actually functional. Nothing would change to your button inputs or the way it would feel, just making it look a little more fitting to the damage type. Maybe not, it's just a thought. I do think if they chose to go down this route, they should try to make the strongest endgame weapon always match the original type of the weapon, at least for now. While people are adjusting to the idea, I say this as if this is an actual thing that is happening and currently underway. Though that said, even if once in a while, while DLC is being released, a new monster comes along and a blunt sharp weapon is the strongest option for two months, would anyone really be all that mad? Two months of using a slightly weird weapon? It would be odd, sure, but all new things are odd at first. Then when it comes to balancing, sure, you could go with the straight up crunching the numbers, changing the literal attack value to be lesser by whatever Capcom thinks stun is worth, but then we would come across interesting things like blunt dual blades just being the king of certain things, just because attacking that fast with stun values and element is sort of insane, even if it can be hard for a weapon that short to reach the head sometimes. 
So, what if we did something just a little bit more interesting than that? Now is where we're getting to the bit more experimental side of things, where I really mean it when I say I've been thinking about this forever, and well, let's start with this. What if, for weapons that are sharp by default, stun essentially acts as the sixth element? Multipass. Yeah. Multipass. Lila, uh, multipass, you know this multipass. I know there have always been five, but hear me out for a moment. Just make it so that every single blunt option of a sharp weapon is elementless. Not necessarily that every elementless weapon is blunt, because we don't want to just completely remove raw sharp weapons as a playstyle, but what if every one of the blunt sharp weapons was just incapable of having elemental value on them? And that way, as a way of balancing it, it realistically is more about the elemental damage versus the value of stun through a hunt, and just making sure that they match up relatively well. And considering my initial thought was that these weapons would definitely need to have less raw attack in the first place than their sharp counterparts, I feel like comparing blunt to an elemental value in this case is surprisingly applicable, as elemental weapons also take a hit to their raw attack to gain their elemental value. As for the sharp blunt weapons, I would sort of lean into the same idea, but in the opposite way. Whereas for sharp weapons, my suggestion is for the blunt options to have no element. For the blunt weapons, my suggestion for the sharp option is to have more element. Less overall damage against most creatures, but more of the percentage of the damage being elemental. Which means it would be great to bring to monsters that have particularly weak elemental hit zones, and otherwise wouldn't necessarily be better. And against a monster whose best elemental hit zone is not that good of a sharp hit zone, the blunt version would still be better. This type of thing would only be legitimately better on rare occasion, but would still provide a usable alternative to the standard, flipping the status quo. And it sort of fits the whole feel of blunt versus sharp. I feel like it's a lot more unga bunga to be using a raw weapon, and it's a lot more unga bunga to be using a blunt weapon, so it makes sense to put those together at the end of the day. As for things like the Hunting Horn's sharp damage jab forwards, that could be sort of hilariously flipped, where you make the top end of the Hunting Horn sharp, because most of the damage is now sharp, and the bottom bit, the handle there, is just sort of a blunt knob, so it does a tiny amount of blunt damage instead, like a Great Sword Solo Tackle. Great Sword Solo Tackle. Unfortunately, though, I don't think we can give blunt Great Swords a sharp shoulder tackle, unless we install metal plates in every hunter. I'll draw up the schematics! That was not a serious request. Hell, you could even have something like a switch axe, where the axe is blunt and the sword is still sharp. But that actually starts to sound a little confusing, honestly. I will say that I'm not quite sure how or even if this would extend to bow guns. Range is sort of a category itself for a specific reason. However, bows, I could see having a bit of alternative options. Specifically, a couple of attacks that already do blunt or sharp damage. For example, picture the swordfish bow. What if when you do the arc shot that launches a barrel above a creature's head to drop spiky blunt damage balls on it, it instead was a barrel that dropped swordfish, sword first, therefore dealing sharp damage. How do we make this make sense mechanically speaking? Well, this one is a little bit more awkward, <laughs> no surprises there, given that it only affects a singular move. But I was thinking, what if we let these barrels, these sharp barrels, apply your coating? For example, for one use of a paralysis coating, you can send up the barrel, which then drops paralysis fish over an area for a few seconds, essentially providing an option that does less damage to apply your coating more effectively than you'd be able to normally. I don't know, bows are hard, especially because as easy as it is to think of the other attack, it would be sort of ineffective. Let's say some bows have blunt looking arrows for whatever reason. This still wouldn't affect the normal shots that they do, as they still do ranged damage. But what if the dragon piercer did blunt damage? It would be underwhelming. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Realistically, only two or three ticks would even hit the monster in the head if you aim right down their skull. It just, it wouldn't be massively effective. But it was something tiny and neat to think about in relation to the topic at hand. But I guess that's what the whole topic is to me, to an extent. It's not about things that are supposed to be massively effective or reshape the meta of the game or define what the Monster Hunter series is at its core. I'm not saying that these weapons should have straight up unique movesets or anything ridiculous like that. At the end of the day, this change would be sort of tiny, but as far as I'm concerned, it would have a very positive effect on the longevity of hunting in Endgame and the nuance of building sets. It's just an interesting mechanic I think could definitely be worked into the series in the future, providing more options for hunters at every stage of the game. Not redefining what the best options are, but simply adding more options for you to choose. That said, there is no indication that this is happening in any capacity at any 
anytime soon. It's just something that I love to think about and I guess love to talk about. So there it is. All right, everyone, I've been Cotton Dinosaur and this has been a bit of a discussion about blunt sharp and sharp blunt weapons. Do you think that this would be a good thing for the game or series in general? Do you have any other ideas for how this could be implemented? Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. This is the brand new outro to tell you all the things that you do that we love. So let's start with something simple and say, oh, we love your eyes. When they're watching us play video games, when we make a bunch of jokes that are kind of lame. Or when they gaze upon our failures as we try to kill the monsters or important, important news about the kingdom and Amelia. Rage, Cotton, and Hollow are all here talking about the things you want to hear. So if you want to be the first to hear, like and subscribe and the bell and we'll cheer. Some of you are patrons, even though we are all the noobs and you're the pros. There's nothing we can do to thank you. No, really, there's nothing we could possibly do. Goodbye.